In this video we'll look at which fluid solver to choose when setting up a fluid cloth interaction scene. We'll explore how these two dynamic solvers can work in conjunction with each other, each influencing the behaviour of the other, and we'll also explore some important setup techniques. In this scene we have these two pieces of cloth and they are attached to this frame and we have a water pipe. So if we hit play you'll see that water comes down from the pipe, it tears that first piece of cloth and then it pools in the bottom of this second piece of cloth. And this is two active simulations going on here. The cloth simulation is interacting with the fluid simulation at the same time. It hasn't been previously animated to do this. So if we just come through this slowly, you can see the water comes through. It rebounds into the cloth sim. It tears that sim. So we can see that tearing happening. And then as it tears, it then catches and stretches this second cloth sheet, pulls together in the bottom and then fills up. And it looks very nice. And obviously because it's the actual water sim that's causing the cloth sim to simulate, it feels all part of the same sim and it uh, looks very good. So if we want to do sims like this within X particles, the fluid solver that we must use is either XP Fluid FX or XP Fluid PBD. This won't work with the XP Fluid Flip Fluid Solver. So let's have a look at how we might set up a scene like this. We'll go to Window, we'll just jump into a more simplified scene which will play in real time, no need for a cache. So if we hit play on this scene, we can see that we have a piece of cloth. If we hit play, it's pinned by its corners and it's being pulled down by gravity and it's stretching a little. So let's just have a look in our object manager. We have this piece of cloth geometry, which is effectively a, a plane. And then we created cloth from this geometry. And when you create cloth in X particles, it's simple to do. You just go to the X particles menu, to the dynamics menu, and you create cloth. And it will take your geometry that's selected and it will add a cloth tag. It will also bring in a cloth modifier and an XP constraints object. And also it will set up an XP emitter linked to the cloth geometry. If you have a look at our um, plane, if we go into point mode, you'll see that it's being pinned by this point selection. So you make a selection there and then in our cloth tag, if you go to the advanced tab, we can activate pinning, drag in that point selection and then the cloth will be pinned in place by those selected points. So that's pretty simple to do. So then, if we want this to interact with some fluid, there's a couple of things that we need to do. First of all, you need to understand the concept that X particles cloth is actually driven by particles, not the geometry itself. So when you bring in and create cloth, it creates a emitter which is linked to the geometry. And what the emitter does is automatically set up. So when you press play, it creates a particle per vertex of your geometry. And it's these particles that are being forced down by the gravity and then the particles are forcing the geometry to deform in that way, which is how we're getting this nice cloth look. So it's the particles that are being affected by the modifiers, not the geometry itself. So once we've done that, we're able to have a look at how we can get fluid interacting with this. So we have another emitter, which is going to be our water. So let's activate that. And if we hit play, you'll see that we're getting these particles and they're interacting with this cloth somewhat. It doesn't look like fluid. Um, and they're kind of forcing the cloth to move. And they're kind of colliding, but we're getting leakage. Look, the, the, the particles are coming through the cloth somewhat. So at the moment, the reason we're getting anything from this simulation is because 
when we create cloth, it brings in an XP constraints object. And in the constraints, if we go to the collisions tab, you can see that collisions is active. So this is particle to particle collisions. So this is brought in so that when our cloth bends, it doesn't intersect with itself because these particles collide rather than pass through each other. But because we've got another emitter active in the scene, our water emitter uh, particles are also affected by this constraints object. And so these particles are colliding with our cloth particles. And so that's why we can see we're, we're getting this correct movement. But the reason we're getting some leakage is that we don't have enough accuracy in this constraint solve to properly get these collisions um, perfectly accurate. And so to get more accuracy in a constraint solve, you can add more substeps, which we'll do in a moment. Before we do that, let's start to get this to look more like fluid, because at the moment these are just individual particles. So what we need to do is get a fluid solver. So if we want this to interact with cloth, it needs to be either fluid effects or fluid PBD. So let's go to our dynamics menu and let's bring in an XP fluid effects. Now, if we hit play now, you're going to see that we're getting a fluid simulation, but it's not going to interact with our cloth. Let's hit play. All right, so it's just passing straight through. So something's wrong. And this is the key thing to remember when we want fluids to interact with cloth. We've got two simulation solvers going on here, and they need to calculate in the correct order. First, the cloth simulation uh, calculation needs to take place and then the fluid. So in order to fix this, all we need to do is make sure that our fluid solver is below the cloth modifier in our list because um, it's a, an order of operations. We need the cloth modifier to do the solve first, then the fluid effects solve to take place. And by doing that, you're going to see that now we're getting interaction with this fluid body of water, this fluid jet is interacting with our cloth. Now you can clearly see we're not getting accurate enough collisions here for this to be working correctly. So how might we solve it? Well, one strategy would be to increase the overall project substeps here, which is going to make these, um, uh, these collisions more accurate. And so to do that, you'd hit Control or Command D to bring up the Cinema 4D project settings. And you can see within there, there's a dedicated X particles project settings. And we can increase the subframe steps. So if we increase this to two, you'll see that those collisions are better. They still won't have solved it much better, but we're still getting some leaking particles. So we'd need to increase them more. But the problem with that is the more that you increase the substeps, the longer your simulations will take, because obviously it's making far more calculations. But also, this is going to have the effect of stiffening up your cloth simulation, because that's what happens. If we increase the substeps, we're increasing the iterations per frame as well. And if you increase iterations in a cloth simulation, you make that simulation, that cloth, stiffer. That's what happens with increased iterations. So we'd have to start adjusting our cloth to try and loosen it up a bit because we've made it more stiff with these subframe steps. So let's not use this strategy to stop um, these particles from not colliding correctly. Because what we're able to do is get um, uh, perfect collisions by using both the constraints to get the cloth movement and using polygon collisions to stop those fluid particles from penetrating the cloth. So the way we do that is we go to our cloth geometry and we just put a collider tag on it. So let's go to tags, X particles tags, collider tag. Now, we have to make a couple of changes because if we press play now, you're going to see our cloth geometry is going to not solve correctly. So let's have a look. Look at that. It's all gone wrong and it's starting to deform all over the place. And that's because, remember, the cloth is driven by the particles. If we make those visible. But because we now have a collision tag on the geometry that our particles are stuck to, it's causing this issue because they're stuck to it, but they're trying to bounce off it at the same time. 
But we're able in our collision tag to go to this setting called self collision, which by default is active. If we turn that off, it means that any particles that are generated on this object won't be considered in the collision calculation. So now if we hit play, let's just make those cloth particles invisible. Now we hit play, the fluid particles are interacting with the cloth and making it crease and bulge because of the constraints collisions, but they are, be, they are bouncing off it. They are not able to penetrate it because of the polygon collisions. And you can see we're getting this perfect sim that is actually playing really nicely and quite quickly in our viewport. So that's working really well. And if we wanted to, look, we could add, let's add a wind modifier to this scene. So the wind modifier is affecting the cloth particles, but not the water particles. We've told it not to affect the water particles. And that means that our cloth is blowing towards us, but then the water particles are kind of pushing it back. And you see, we're getting this really nice interaction with those um, particles and we're getting this fantastic looking sim and that is interacting very nicely and as you can see we're getting really smooth and pretty quick playback in our viewport. We can of course use XP Fluid PBD here as well as I mentioned earlier so let's just deactivate the fluid effects let's go to our dynamic objects we'll bring in an XP Fluid PBD it automatically brings it to the top of the hierarchy and of course it's not going to work at the top of the hierarchy um, you can see that it's it's bouncing off our polygon collisions but it's not influencing the cloth look that water stream is not influencing that cloth in any way it's just being blown by the wind so to get it to work properly we have to have the cloth solve first so we bring the pbd underneath the cloth modifier and now we can see that it is affecting that cloth and it's forcing the cloth back, but then the wind's pushing it back out and we're getting this very nice pooling effect. So both of those um, solvers will work in interacting with cloth, both fluid PBD and fluid effects. So obviously use the one that you have in your existing scene or the one that you are most comfortable using. Personally, my go-to solver, if there's ever a choice, is XP Fluid Effects. That's the one that I would always choose over XP Fluid PBD.